Um, even though this was a independent film, we had quite a few visual effects. You know, really simple things such as this, where it was just a wire removal uh, to remove the cable which powered the cube. I mean, that you've seen a million times, not too important. Um, there's also coming up the shots of the two Pauls. That's an obvious effect shot. But as we get into it, there are quite a few shots that came about um, unexpectedly that we use creatively to help tell the story. Uh, for instance, putting the logo here on the, the monitor for the Young Inventors competition. That's all done in post. Next, uh, in this shot here, in the background, right about here, you can see the writer, Hanson Smith, walk into frame. And you'll notice here, he has been painted out as if he never walked on set. Um, in this section, you know, I, I wanted to have a distinctive look on a television set, so I shot the actor live, and then afterwards in post, uh, Wade, our digital effects artist, he then took it, put filters on it, animated the face, and you see how the face kind of squirms and squishes a bit, you know, that's on purpose. Uh, one of the better shots is this background replacement. You can see the current plate on the live action side just has uh, wires and cables in the background, but I decided that a cityscape would be much better in our only you know, real exterior shot of the film to kind of give it some sort of life in this constricted movie, which is you know, designed on purpose to be like that. Um, all these monitor shots, I really wanted to have a really distinctive look that I just couldn't find, so I decided to shoot the monitors live. Um, and then in post, we would add in there and you have much more control over the look and exactly what's going on on those monitors. If you look in the reflection of Paul's glasses, you can see it in the reflection, which I don't think we'd get practically. Um, and everything matches. Everything's perfect. I mean, Wade did an amazing job to get those to line up. I mean, you'd never think of that as a VFX shot. Um, and that's what I like about it is they're not typical VFX shots. I really like the shadow of Jenny's uh, head in this take, but the problem was in this take, uh, Chris Masterson was already in the shot. So what we did was just took him out really easy, and that helped with the timing of it. Um, and this shot here, that was all, that's all on stage, but we wanted, I mean, I wanted to put him a background behind them. So Wade just put a little background, a little street background. I mean, it's only a few frames, but it helps kind of sell that this is not just a set. In this shot, you can see in the original take, um, Lindsay comes in much later uh, than I uh, wanted to see her in editing. So what we did was we just shortened the shots, and now we have her coming in right as Paul lifts the pipe to bash the CSC guy. Um, I think it works really well. This here is um, kind of raw uh, behind-the-scenes footage of um, of me discussing, you know, how we're going to approach the shooting of the white room scene. Um, this is a uh, it's totally unedited. It's uh, it's just straight footage. This is really for just a hardcore geeks who kind of want to just watch someone make something on set. But it is interesting to kind of see. Um, how things are put together on set, and then later on, um, how it all comes together in post production and is finished. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay. So, everybody, today is Altered Reality. Yay! I hope everyone's read the script so they know what's going on. Basically, uh, a clean palm and a dirty palm. Now, this shouldn't be that difficult of a shoot, right? You shouldn't think of this as a giant effect shot, because it isn't. You know, this is, we're well, gonna try to play it out as traditional as we can. And I'm gonna try to keep as many singles as possible and try to avoid a lot of doubles, right? That way, it'll keep us less matching on the other side. The marks on the floor, that everyone can see, is the basic blocking for the two palms. The black is for dirty palm. And the white is the clean fall. Um, today we'll be shooting Chris Masterson as Dirty Fall and Rob Tepper as Clean Fall. So all the shots today that really matter will be Chris Masterson's face as Clean Fall and then Rob as his double in the foreground, which will always be dirty and which won't be, it'll always be the edge of frame. Um, 
does anyone have any questions about technique or anything that's involved with the departments that they need to have addressed? Where does the soda get from? The soda will be thrown like that and will cut on it. So all we need to do is like hang like some sort of blanket off camera and throw it into. And where will that happen? It'll land over there, about where the Jenny picture is. That's where the mess is going. That's where the camera. Yep, right where we're at. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just dress it. We don't actually have to shoot him throwing it and hitting it. All you have to do is throw it, and then we'll cut, then I cut out the cocoon, and then we just show her dirty. And then we just clean the mess. Um, there is a change in the script. There's no longer a mechanical ball. So the way we're going to handle that is there will be a, there's three light phases. There's the, there's the always lit, there's the half lit after he mentions his father, and then there's the shadow light, which will turn off the general lights and just light these back muslims and try to pull shadows. Pulling these shadows may be a little bit time consuming to do, but we'll get that work and that's what we'll do the, the dirty ball smashing clean ball gag. Um, the cube will always be on, so we'll always have the shadow lights, so we'll need smoke in here at all times to get that going. Um, and the cube, we, we want to have a full, the hours will be down, it's have like a small beam of light. We only have a big fat beam of light. Um, just because it looks cool like that. And then when Paul pulls it off the pedestal, that's when we'll go into our shadow world. And we just get really, really dark. So the shadow world now, what do you do? Do the shadows on the, the shadows of the machine parts on the side? No, it'll just be the two all the shadows. So we'll have them backlit by the two by the three Muslim, maybe one Muslim. And that's what we have to figure out is how to create those shadows most effectively. Um, there's a, it's not a last minute rewrite, but it's a new story. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you can video, video of this film just right capture here. all things. Ideally, I'd really like to get this whole thing shot today. We can get the shot, I mean, I think it's possible to get this, to get this shot today. I really hope so. If not, then we're working Thursday. So if everyone can really well and efficiently, we'll get things done today. And we got tomorrow, then that's it. And we have a really nice shoot. Um, worst case, we don't get it done today. Then we're going to shoot this today, go to the TV studio tomorrow, and come back in here for the flip side. So ideally, we get this all done today, um, which I think is possible and definitely attainable. Um, there's not a lot of lighting tweaks we can do. Things are pretty well mapped out. So we're gonna, we'll walk through with Chris and Robin a little bit, um, just so everyone can see what's going on with it. Um, and then hopefully we get it all done today. It'll be really sweet. If not, we'll come back Thursday, no big deal. Um, any more questions for anyone? I just have a question about yeah. uh, layout board. There's two options. There's one to pull it all out for these booties, and two to pull parts off. The, the only concern I have about having parts off is are we going to see the reflection of the brown off of the... We, well, I think, and anyone can question me on this, we, we have two separate pieces of clean white layout board to put the dolly onto. Everyone else will have to wear booties and socks. Everyone's got to wear white inside here. We've got a skirt to go around the dolly to make it all white. I prefer if everyone was in socks. I mean, they're so sticky, but it does not prefer that with socks. Because in case you're going to get scuffed. Or socks with booties on top of socks. That way we have the white socks and you have a little bit of rubber booties on. I myself have little white slippers with little rubber bottoms. Aww. <laughs> and they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> Are they bunnies? No, it's not bunnies. But, uh, but yeah, everyone in here during rolling needs to be wearing white. Um, you AC, mean their clothes need to be white? Clothes need to be white. Except for you. You know, you're fine. You can reflect all your life. And Rob, you can, you can reflect all your life too. I think it's, I see it. Yeah, you can see everything. So you get a whole wool. Um, and as long as, you know, as long as we have, well, we probably need like a little clean room out there, because we're outside, so that we can change everything, and really wipe your shoes clean. You know, everyone make sure your feet are clean, shoes are clean. Um, we'll have a really, we're going to keep the numbers down on the set. This is one entrance. So please, if you don't need to be in here, don't be in here. It's not that we don't want you, it's going to keep the numbers down and the traffic down. And we'll just come in as needed. So just stand by, and then if you need to, we'll call you on the radio. You can come on in and do your deal and get on out. But we talked um, about the nature of the lock-offs, so the two key lock-offs. That will be tricky. We'll, we'll have to put one shot, we'll do it at the end. We've got the second body being stated tested now. Oh, good. Excellent. So, um, they're, they're providing me to make the lab, we show it back by some time. Right on. So hopefully we do that.
and the steady, uh, finger body steady test it when it's good. It'd be really nice to get a lock up to really sell the shot of the two Chris's together. Um, these these lock offs are, uh, are pretty difficult to do because the lighting here, won't, all the lights will only be on for a couple of shots, and then in certain settings, only certain lights are going to be on. So the lighting department has got to be very accurate as to exactly what lights are on for particular shots. And when, this, when the shots are set for lock off, we need to make sure that nothing gets moved at all, no furniture. We need to keep the action around camera to a minimum. Um, and we need, to, we need to know where we are. So when we come out of our first clean pool setup, so dirty pool setup, we go into clean pool, we come out of that setup on the lock off, we go into the next sequence on the lock off, and we, we really need to kind of have our wits about it. And we need to in terms of moving anything, even if it's on this side of the room and we're not seeing it, if it moves, it'll change the shadows because everything's so reflective. So you need to really bust it in a tight now. Yeah, everything's going to be very registered. No cops. Um, and as far as the lockups go, the, the only if we do the lockup, it'll be the last shot and the first shot up. That way, we don't have to go back. I mean, it'd be impossible to rewind things up. So that's how we do the lock up between transitions. When we transition, we'll shave Chris Masterson so he'll be shaven and then he's no longer dirty ball, he'll be ready to be dead ball after that. So we want to make sure everything's good before we shave and clean them all up. Um, Pretty worried about the top of your head it being so shiny when you have to give it a day. That's the weather. We'll get um, What am I forgetting? Sound with those two radio mics. Um, just to hide that because we'll see everything here. Um, Some of the walls are so wet, so don't lean on them. Yeah, no one leans on the walls, anyways. I have a question actually. I want to know what our key grip thinks about us working on something with uh, no shoes on. Well, I think that my suggestion is that um, uh, Mike should be able to wear shoes. If he's pulling dolly, then he needs to be able to have the shoes on. Yeah. Well, we, we'll get the well, he'll, he'll, be on the, he'll be on the sheet with the dolly anyway. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the white booties come up like here, so they'll cover anybody's shoes. Yeah, yeah. we'll just like, put tape on the edge and see how rubber sold. Yeah. Um, so much like, is this a hard, any of the hard shoes are going to do these scuffing to the surface because it's so mirrored. You're trying to keep it out for a minute. Yeah. So if you're padding around on the set, try and do these socks. But if you're behind camera on the, on the linoleum. Yeah, I mean, if obviously you're pushing anything, you know, we'll make it right. Just get, we'll get some of the layout board. If you've got to move stuff, get layout board, put it down, walk in the layout board. Don't move heavy things with socks. I, I haven't seen this, but it looks really slick. Oh yeah, so it'll be like itself. an ice skater, right? Yeah, so definitely. Um, and for me, like the uh, safety, there's one entrance, so that area needs to remain clear at all times. Um, and I'd like all four of the fire extinguishers to be around set. Um, I have something close right out here. If anything happens at all, then you know whatever we're doing, we stop um, and uh, we we'll take care of whatever that issue is. So, I, and um, in case of an emergency, just slice one of those panels and come with your knives and you can get out. It's only Muslim. It's only Muslim. <laughs> I saw our fire extinguisher guy here picking up fire extinguishers. Do we have any still? <laughs> and where's Video Village going to be? It'll be next to sound, just right out there. Cool. Oh. And another thing, since this, this, this is an all-white set, uh, try not to lean against the wall. Or break the scenery. Or break, or break the black things. Sorry. It's only a hundred fifty dollar rental. <laughs> well, again with the registration, it's a party it's now. Set, but, uh, <laughs> all right. Moments in show business. <laughs> okay, so why don't we have this gonna go home? Is there any more questions you think the talking thing got brought up in everyone's heads? So why don't we if we have Chris and Rob just kinda of walk through it? Oh, I have one more thing. Yeah. I think it would be smart to have a uh, no brown soda or coffee on set policy during this show. The only thing that could be allowed yeah, water is the right Bottled water. Yeah, like, no soda, nothing. Just bottled water. No food. Yeah. Yes. Here's my here's my the coffee in my hand. So you can ask him to walk through it so I can see. Yep. Now, if any issues come up, we can address it. So. Um, 
Let's. Uh, we're going to do a blocking rehearsal, and everybody just kind of find a corner and stand there. But don't lean against it. Right. Yeah. Um, don't, don't lean against. Don't, don't touch anything. Guy, the guy projects the guy. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 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 so if I see them over and over again, they know what's dead. What's up? I trust his judgment. I don't want to trust Ken's judgment over Naval. He wouldn't know anything. Let's go get a steady test. Yeah. What's it? So um, let's stand by for a black round rehearsal. Stand by for blocking so, do you want to talk about sitting in this room? Let's do the blocking first, and then we'll talk about that. And action. What is all this? What is all that? I'm going to get you a beverage. They call it the pop top. I thought it should have been called essentially that much freshness seal. You just can't argue with marketing. Can you hand it off? Can cost virtually nothing to make. And it's revolution in soda distribution. It's making millions. Who are you? Where did you get all my things? So that's where we'll, we'll hang like a burning pad or something and chuck it into. It. Totally should we, cool. Should we go, should we walk through the whole thing or should we break it down bit by bit? We can, we can break it down. We flush the whole thing and then we'll break it down as we need. Okay. Yeah, yeah. let's watch it once. Okay. You'll be able to say this is how far we're going on each piece. Yeah. And that might be... Well, let's, let's block it bit by bit then. No, no, bit by bit. Yeah, but because it's supposed well, to be. Why don't you put your ones and bit by bit? That way everyone knows the general shape. Okay. Yeah, so you bit by bit. So you, it, it, um, uh, Chris has been um, dirty for a while. Yep, right. Cool. 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 Can we start you cleaning it up? Cut back into it? Sure. I'm sorry, you must be mistaken. You've been walking. Yeah. Fine, Mr. Slacker. Maintaining the whites and patterns. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, you may not look at those. Why not? Never mind. Classified. Yep. Uh, my smoking jacket? Yep. Can I sit on this? Yep. Sorry, you may not sit there. Why not? I deserve this. Pardon me, sir. You're intruding on my whole personal space. I'm trying to be a gracious host. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid you're missing. See, this is mine. All of it. It was taken from me years ago, and now I'm to get it back. Thank you. called me a minute, John. Oh, man, I used to look up to you. You were my idol. That thing's changed. Your ideas became unsound. Unsound? Yeah. 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 This. With me as their lab route, they can control everything and minimize their liability. Hmm. I see. And what would anybody gain from uh, a person such as yourself? Do not patronize me. They fear my greatness. They wish to destroy me. That's simply just not true. No one is out to destroy you. You create an illusion to protect yourself from your failure. What illusion? This is real. The spies. Conspiracies. Oh, these all-powerful people were actually out to get you. Don't you think they would just have to kill them? So, I don't remember how this works. There is no wall that I'm pointing at? No, there's a wall. Uh, Jenny, that's where Ian's standing on the beginning. So am I going, they couldn't harm me directly. My name is too well known. I'm not yeah. referencing anything, right? No. Okay. They couldn't, name, they couldn't harm me directly. My name is too well known, remember? I'm child prodigy, Paul Lee Eddie. Sorry, it's just not true. They're just people. This is just life. Things just got a little bit dark after Father left. So right here, we'll go to the, the second lighting, where we dim it down, and it gets a little bit more dark. So 
the little cups not, of, not the shadows yet, but just uh, like almost like this ambient light. Yeah. So you want to do it in full contrast? Do you want to, you know, I don't, I don't maintain level, but like I can change the contrast. Contrast is fine, yeah. Just if we have some sort of somehow just darken it or lower or something, or maybe our contrast it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to think about it. I don't know okay. why. Keep going, don't mind me. Okay, and continue. Action. Things just got a little darker after five of that. Rocco? Is that a good one? Um, life, people. Oh, life, people? Yes, I trust people. I believe in people. I believe in good and decency, but I've learned. Life has taught me how wrong I am. Yes, I was. The world is run by greed, corruption, and lies. What about trust, integrity, and common good? Lies are more common than good. Integrity is meant that trust was invented by the strong to control and empower the weak. What has become of you? You used to be something. Now all you have is excuses. Excuses, you say? Excuses, you say? My brilliance. How far you want me to go? What about there, it's fine. Is here. Hey, number two. <laughs> yes, but at what cost? What have you sacrificed? These are, this is, these, these are mine and you cannot take them. I am the victim. You're making yourself the victim, Paul. Please believe me. You lied. That was, you lied. That was her mistake. No. Yes, it was. I am perfect. Don't do this. So, I'm one of those two. I go over here. Yes. Over this. this is mine and they cannot take it from me. Not that rat landlady, not the Russians, not the police. This is last nice chance. Don't end it. This is my last chance, and no one can take it away. No one will stop me. Certainly not yeah. you. Yep. And so when he pulls out the cube, and the lights get dim even more, and this is the shadow. It is. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. 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 That one. Yeah. 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 Yes. Nice. That chair this, won't this be. This is not going to be here, right? No. It's He's going to be here. Yeah. What do they switch? Switch it once, and then we'll switch over and do that over again. It's just like only getting two after two cases. Right, but at what stage do I need to get? Excuse me. Uh, Chris changed. Of course, we shot them all out. So we're shooting the whole thing mm -hmm. one way with Chris. Yep. Yeah. 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 Y
and mark them up now. Then we can use that as a template. Yeah. I, reckon uh, we, the, the, I was looking at the amount of shops we, we had on here. This will this will complete. Mm -hmm. So I reckon that when we come when we come through when we come through the door, mm -hmm. one shop covers him to here. Mm -hmm. We have. 34 cross this way. Yep. You just have them cross frame. We need the camera here. Okay. okay. Makes sense. So you cross this frame, the eye line's this way. We basically, we then have the eye line cutting across frame. Then this eye line changes because dirty pull comes over here, right? Yeah. So the eye line comes this way and then he exits. Yep. And now this, what, what from we can, there, there's a hard cut so we can re enter. What we can do is we don't have to cut it, we can just follow him around, mm -hmm. all right, and take him um, into, into this position mm -hmm. and then just flash. 34 through frame. Yeah. So what happened in the back will pan past him fast enough to actually kind of take him out and come to this position. So we rather than having, we can just cut down under the amount of number of shots that we get. Mm -hmm. But I need to see it in. We we'll just keep things long. And keep it yeah. longer. Keep it longer, absolutely. The longer the better. And this, so we, we're keeping off the cheap shot. The cheap shots are going to go and constantly going over the shoulder. You know? Yeah, I don't want to do that. No, not a lot. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, we can do it a couple of times when we're going to get them getting tighter, mm -hmm. but, but run more flashing shots. And yeah. just make sure that when, when we are going past you know, someone who's, you know, if we, we need to hide faces, we, we kind of, for that moment, we're just turning away for, for a moment as the camera goes past. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I think we've got one, one shot up, of, up the middle, which does straight down the guards. Okay. Here, eyeline crossing, <coughs> to tab machine, so the, the coat can throw, mm -hmm. and we can follow around the position. Okay. The, the coat can throw, he has to throw it against. I understand that, but we can cut out of it just at the point exactly. and, where, and where we're going to get into the, into, uh, the yeah. in the background. But then we can then cut, we're probably going to cut into the other pole, dirty pole, I'm sorry, clean pole anyway, at that exactly. point. You want to get your Nikon? I'm going to get my camera out. Which, I mean, if we just go through and just shoot, shoot it out for clean pour and then shoot it out for dirty pour. Yeah. And make a, make make a print out template. Well, why don't we pull everybody out of here Absolutely. and let, the, you know, uh, let you guys yeah. do that so that you know we'll just keep everything, everybody out of here so you guys can... We need to bring down these few shots as we can get away with. We put an iPhoto and just print out a very one. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, cut on rehearsal. Um, so they're going to do. What is all this? Oh, hello. May I offer you a beverage? They call it the Pop Top. I thought it should have been called the Centrally Leveraged Freshness Seal, but there's just no arguing with marketing people. The can costs virtually nothing to make and has revolutionized soda distribution. It's making millions. Who are you? Where did you get all my stuff? Yours? I'm sorry, you must be mistaken. These are my inventions, not yours. I maintain all rights and patents. I'm sorry, you may not look at those. And why not? They're mine. They're classified. Right. I'm sorry, you may not sit there. And why not? 
I deserve this. Pardon me, sir, but you are intruding in my home, my personal space. I'm trying to be I'm a gracious sorry, host, fellow, but... but I'm afraid you're mistaken. You see, this is mine. All of it. It was taken from me years ago, and now I've come to get it back. I remember you now. You used to be Paul Leonetti, child genius. Oh, man, you were my idol. I looked up to you. But then things changed. Your ideas became... Unsound. Unsound? What do you mean? No disrespect, sir, but I remember it vividly. It was in all the papers. You went mad. Your ideas became illogical and distorted. I've never seen this in my life. My opponents have contrived another hoax in order to discredit me. Opponents? What do you mean? Makes sense, doesn't it? Someone's always there to gain from my loss. They need me to work and to fail. Why would anyone want to see you fail? Must I explain this? With me as their lab rat, they can control everything and minimize their liability. Hmm, I see. And what exactly is there to be gained from a person such as yourself? Do not patronize me. They fear my greatness. They wish to destroy me. That's simply not true. You have created an illusion to protect yourself from your failures. What illusion? This is real. The spies, the conspiracies. Paul, if these all-powerful people were really after you, why wouldn't they just have you killed? They cannot harm me directly, remember? My name is too well known. I'm child prodigy, Paul Leonetti. I'm sorry, Paul. That's just not true. They're just people, and this is just life. Things just grew a bit darker after father left. Life? People? Yes, I trusted people. I believed in people. I believed in good and decency, but I learned. Life has taught me how wrong I was. You weren't wrong. Yes, I was. The world is run by greed, corruption, and lies. What about trust, integrity, and the common good? Lies are more common than good. Integrity is a myth, and trust was invented by the strong to control and devour the weak. You used to be something. Now all you have are excuses. Excuses, you say? My brilliance is here! Yes, but at what cost, Paul? What have you sacrificed? Nothing. She was only trying to help you. I see what's going on now. You're one of them. These are mine and you cannot take them! I am the victim! You are making yourself a victim. Please believe me, Paul. This you is your lied. last that chance. You lied! That was her mistake! No. Yes, it was! I am perfect! This is mine, and they cannot take it from me. Not that rat landlady, not the Russians, not the police! This is your last chance. This is my chance, and Don't no one can take it, it away. Way. No one will stop me! Certainly not you. <laughs> What you're about to see is a uh, is a six minute animatic that we used to not only raise money for the movie, but also use as a visual guide for the film. Um, each of these drawings were used to help uh, create and build the sets and gave um, you know a very clear visual direction to everyone else involved in the production. Uh, what you will definitely notice is that there's a lot of footage in here that we just couldn't shoot due to our budget, you know, on a low budget film, you had to make cuts and sacrifices. And unfortunately there's a lot of really great stuff story wise that I wanted to say, um, in the film that we just couldn't get made. Um, so hopefully as you watch this, you can get a little bit more insight and kind of maybe fill in some gaps, um, that you're wondering about, about Paul's life and you know, how he became the way he became. Um, so check this out and I hope you guys like it.
Nick Peterson and I go way back. Uh, he, he, I've scored uh, all of his uh, projects. Mum was his first, uh, one of his first student films, and was one of my first film scores. And um, from the very beginning, um, just he's a very innovative um, director, and his work always pulled from me some of my best work. When I first read the script, Nick sent me the script. Um, from the moment I read the first few lines, I started hearing music. Um, he had described the film a little bit to me before, and I always knew his films, whether shorts or, or any other form, were, were always these interesting, confusing, fascinating twists and turns all through the way. And, and so I knew that um, I couldn't pass this one up. I, I had to do it. When I first thought about um, initial ideas, concepts, I knew that I wanted something to represent Paul. I wanted something to represent um, the struggle that he was having, um, the angst inside of him, um, this constant paranoia of someone's after him or after his inventions, um, that restlessness. I wanted an instrument to um, be that voice for him. And in this, in this sense, uh, I decided to go with the cello because it's such an emotional, beautiful instrument. It can it can be very aggressive, it can be very angry, but it can be extremely emotional and flowing and lyrical. And um, I, I ultimately settled on that instrument as being the kind of the driving force of the score and crafted kind of everything else around it. The, the cellist that, that we uh, ended up uh, using was a, a very good friend of mine, Stephen Erdoti. Uh, he's a fantastic cellist. He was actually roommates with Yo-Yo Ma. Um, he's the nicest guy, the sweetest guy, and puts so much emotion into his playing. And, and I, I know 
that that is very evident in the solos that he has throughout the score. Most favorite thing about working on the project was the culmination of everything. It's it's for the, for the most part it's generally when you finally are able to be at the studio in front of the orchestra conducting, hearing it all play down, working with some of the greatest musicians in the world, the greatest musicians in the world. Keep in mind that all the score that you hear on not only this film but every other film that you watch are generally the second or third time they've literally played the piece. Um, they're sight reading this music and whether it's difficult music that's virtuosic, virtuosic or it's um, simple music but played beautifully as a whole um, it's 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 done to perfection and that's not hours of practicing that music it's not hours of looking at that music it's it's happening um, at that moment and you're really hearing it in real time and so working with those musicians letting having Nick see the culmination of that um, and the other filmmakers seeing it all come together you're just one step closer to an amazing project and uh, that that's where the real payoff is for me. This is director Nicholas Peterson, and um, I wanted to talk to you about um, creating the world. Um, I really wanted to have a very distinctive look for this film. And my background being animation, I really like to design everything. So I hired this guy named Frank Stockton. Frank is uh, this, this absolutely amazing illustrator. He can draw anything for you. And what he did for me was he took all my ideas and he made them real. Uh, for example, the exterminator, you know, he designed. And the landlady, he designed. And it's, uh, it's amazing to have a talent like Frank who can combine all your ideas and make them all work in a realistic manner. Um, he just doesn't um, do drawings that they think may or may not work. Um, when you ask him to change an angle on something or the lighting on something, he, you know, he's so detail oriented, he makes sure that it actually will work in a real world existence. Um, so as you can see, as, as these are going by, um, you know, these drawings, not worth so much storyboards, but more acted as, um, as a visual direction for everyone involved with the film. Uh, this way the DP knew the type of lighting to use, the type of colors to use. Uh, costume knew how everything should look. Uh, the production designer knew how to build everything and give everything a certain feeling for it. These drawings were used as a visual guide, and as you've seen, um, a lot of them turned out just like the drawings. Um, I mean, my, my philosophy on this project was uh, I'd rather spend six months in pre-production designing and then spend six weeks just building what we already decided to build. Um, it's much more efficient and cost effective to have one guy on the payroll for a bunch of months, you know, designing and collaborating with me and figuring out how everything should look than to have, you know, 30, 40, 50 guys on set trying to figure out on the day. Um, and this gives us, you know, more flexibility and more options to really, you know, use our budget wisely. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, and there, you know, we didn't have a lot of room for error. So it, it's uh, it's great when you know what something's going to look like, and then you can see it when the people go out for you know to, to shop for things or they're building things. They know when it's right, and we don't have to redo everything. Um, and you know, as you'll see here in this scene here in the hospital, uh, it was built just like the drawing. Um, you know, from the actors to the background people and even the shadow and light elements i mean you need to know this stuff beforehand for when they build the sets again here with the little door i mean the doors don't come with little doors and yeah we could have added it later but it's nice to know that we wanted two doors within the door built into it um and i think uh this shot here is one of my favorites of the comparisons because i think it, it was such a great shot that frank and i worked out of the the three shot here that's coming up right there with paul the landlady and the little man it just it just worked out so well to have it all uh happen um probably the most complex shots we did was this one or complex drawings um to really kind of show we did a little bit of animation on it uh just to help seal the deal i mean all these drawings are there just to help everyone along the process on a movie and um, it's amazing when you actually have the talent uh, surrounding you to make all of this stuff happen and make it all uh, a possibility.
Okay. Okay. Thanks okay. for nothing. I just broke the chain. I'm afraid this conversation is over. Good day. What an asshole! <laughs> Good day. Oh, easy! Oh, easy! <laughs> Thank you. 